Hey guys, my name is Michael Chin, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you one of my favorite swing setups that uses the TTM squeeze in Thinkorswim. It's my bread and butter setup that I personally use for around 80% of the trades that I take. But don't let that scare you. It's actually a very simple setup. So whether you're a new trader or an advanced trader, I'm confident that you will be able to profit off of this setup once I teach you how in this video. Okay, but before we get deep in the lesson, Please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in learning more about investing. I post regularly on this channel about strategies like this one and also review some of the live trades that I take for you guys to learn. Okay, so I'm gonna break this lesson down into three parts. In the first part, I'm gonna to explain to you what the TTM squeeze is and why it is important to us. And then in the second part, I'm gonna show you what a perfect chart looks like and then help you build your own chart so that you can start identifying these trades on your own. And then in the third part, I'm gonna teach you how to actually execute the trade. So that means where to enter the trade and also where to exit the trade on a stop exit or a profit target. Now, what is the TTM squeeze? Well, it is a free study provided by Thinkorswim that combines three well-known indicators, the Bollinger Bands, the Keltner Channels, and the momentum oscillator. I've put some resources down below if you want to look those up, but to sum it up, the TTM squeeze is able to track volatility and momentum. So on your Think or Swim platform, let's actually bring up the study and see what it looks like. So if we come to our charts here, we can come to the top right corner and hit the studies button, then hit edit studies. And in this search bar, we can search for the TTM squeeze here, double click it and it'll be added to our chart. Now it comes with some default parameters here. I actually like to use the default parameters. So let's not change anything here and we can hit apply and it'll be added to our charts down below. So you'll see that the study is made up of dots and bars. Let's actually take a look at these and I'll tell you what each component means. So the bars are going to represent momentum. Blue bars represent upwards momentum and red bars represent downward momentum. The lighter color on the bars means that the momentum is increasing if it's blue and for the red ones it shows that it is decreasing whereas the dark blue means that we are losing momentum and the yellow bars show that we are slowly gaining momentum here. The dots on the other hand are going to tell us about the volatility so green dots are telling us that there is high volatility and the red dots are going to show us periods of low volatility. And the red dots are what the study is actually named after, which is the squeeze. So when we see red dots, we can say that the stock is in a squeeze. Now, why does this all matter? Well, as a swing trader, I want to be entering in at the start of the swing. So if I believe that a stock is going to make a swing up like this, then I want to be entering in right here at the start. And with the TTM squeeze, I'm actually able to identify that start by checking to see if the stock is in a period of low volatility, the red dots. So when I see the red dots here, I can immediately tell that the stock is in a squeeze and is in a period of low volatility. And that matters because when a stock is in a period of low volatility, it means that the traders are in equilibrium. It means that the buyers and the sellers are both offsetting each other, and so the price is just moving sideways. But a stock can't stay quiet forever. At some point, it's going to have to release this energy and either go upwards or downwards, right? Either the bulls are going to lose or the bears are going to lose. So when I enter these stocks, I want to see that is in a period of low volatility, because then that means that a big move is about to happen. And as a swing trader, I want to be able to capture this big move. Now that we understand why the TTM squeeze is such an important indicator, let's actually take a look at how this plays out. So if we take a look at the stock here, this is Apple. We can see that there is a four dot squeeze here, and that's going to tell us that the stock is in a squeeze. When we look at the actual prices, we can see that it is indeed consolidating and the stock is quiet. But once this energy is released, the stock gaps up. And then we can see again, there is another squeeze here. 
represented by the red dots. We can see also that the stock is in somewhat of a quiet phase. And the moment this energy is released, the stock gaps up again. Okay, so that's the end of part one, where we learn what the TTM squeeze is and why it is important for us as traders to use as an indicator. Now, one thing you might be asking is, how do we know if the stock is gonna go up, right? The squeeze only tells us that a big move is gonna happen, but how do we know that it's gonna work in our favor, right? What if we buy the stock and then the squeeze fires short and then we end up losing a lot of money? Well, that's where I add in another indicator known as the exponential moving average. So I'm gonna clean up the chart here and show you guys how to add this indicator to your chart. So we're gonna come back up to the studies tab here, hit edit studies, and then I'm going to search for M-O-V-A-V-G. And then we will find a study known as the moving average exponential. So I'm gonna double click it once to add it to my chart. And then I'm actually gonna double click it again to add it a second time. I wanna be using two moving averages for this study. Then I'm gonna to wanna to change the parameters because I wanna use two different time frame exponential moving averages. So I'm gonna double click on the first one, come to this length input and type in eight. So this means that it will be an exponential moving average based on the past eight days. So I'm gonna hit okay here. And then for the second one, I'm gonna double click again, edit the length, and set it to 21. Now I have two exponential moving averages, one that tracks the past eight days and one that tracks the past 21 days. So I'm gonna hit apply here and they will be added to my chart. The next thing that I want to do is I wanna color code them. So you notice that they're both the same color on the chart. We're not gonna be able to tell which one is which. So let's come into the eight exponential moving average here come down to the plot section and I can hit this color and I can change it to let's say yellow. So now our chart here has the eight exponential moving average as yellow and the 21 exponential moving average as blue. So I'll hit okay here. And now you can see that our chart has these two studies set up. So why do I use the eight and the 21 exponential moving average? Well, there's no golden rule here. You can choose whatever numbers you want, but I've found that the eight and the 21 work the best for me. So what do they tell me? Well, if the eight EMA is above the 21 EMA, then that tells me that prices have been trending in a bullish manner for the past 21 days. So if I'm going to enter a trade and I want to enter it long, then I want to make sure that the 8 EMA is above the 21 EMA. The next thing I also want to see is that prices are above the 21 EMA. So if we look at this chart here, we can tell that mostly throughout this whole upwards trend, except right here, we can see that prices have been above the 21 EMA. So that tells me that prices are trending strong in the upwards direction. But when prices start to go below the 21 EMA, as we see here, then that's a sign of danger. It's a sign that the stock could be reversing and we should be careful. So when it comes back to the squeeze, I want to make sure that when I am entering a squeeze, on the long side, I wanna make sure that the eight is above the 21. So as we can see here, the eight EMA has to be greater than the 21 EMA. And we have to see that prices are trading above the 21 EMA. So I want price to be greater than the 21 EMA. So when we actually take a look at this chart here, we can see that the prices are trading above the 21 EMA and that the eight EMA is above the 21 EMA. So right there, this is a solid setup and I would look to be buying Apple stock 
in this zone right here, expecting a move up when the squeeze fires. And that's actually it. That's how simple this setup is. We only have three parameters as a baseline that we must have when we want to buy a stock. We need to have that eight above the 21, the price is trading above the 21 exponential moving average, and we need to see that there is a squeeze in place. And with that alone, we actually have a setup that works out around 70% of the time. So if you were to just trade this setup on all of your swing trades, you could become a very profitable trader. But there's always ways to add edge. And one way that I like to add edge on this trade is I like to make sure that the stock is trading near the all time highs. Now let's actually take a look at the Apple chart again to understand why that's a big deal. So let's take a look at this downswing here. So if we wanted to buy Apple here at this low, we would actually encounter a ton of resistance. Okay. And that comes from traders that are in pain who either bought the high or tried to buy the dip. So first let's talk about trader a trader a is up here. He just bought this high thinking that Apple was going to continue running higher. Instead it reversed. And now he's in a lot of pain and the only thing he wants to do is to get out at break even so he can come out on a zero on this trade. So he's going to try and put his sell stop in right here and see if he can get out of this trade for zero dollars. But the stock continues to go down further. And so now he tries to beg and hold on and maybe he can get out at 50%. So he puts in a sell order at 50%. And the same is going to happen for all the other traders that are trying to buy here and buy the dip. So if someone thought this was the low and the stock continued to go down further, he's going to put in his sell order here. Guys are going to put in their sell orders here, here, here. And now there's a whole mess of resistance with all of these traders that are in pain that are trying to get out at break even. So when you come in and try and buy the stock here, not only do you need buying pressure to send the stock up, you need enough buying pressure to break through all of this resistance. Now, when we look at this squeeze up here on Apple, we can see that it's actually at all time highs. If we remember the old all time high for Apple was 240. So once we pass this mark, there's actually no more resistance and there's no more resistance because there's no buyers up here that are in pain. You know, you're not able to buy at this price since Apple never traded up here. So that means that when Apple starts to take off, there's literally no resistance stopping it. The only resistance that's in place to stop Apple from trading higher are profit takers. So when I look at a squeeze and it's on a stock that's trading near its all time highs, I am going to take this trade immediately because there is a much bigger edge that we are going to see a bigger move in our favor. Okay, so that's the end of part two. And by now I hope you understand how to identify this trade on your own charts. I'm going to be moving on to part three, where I'm going to teach you how to actually execute this trade. So that means where are we going to enter the trade? And where are we going to exit the trade? So let's come back to the Apple chart here. And let's take a look at the, this squeeze again. So when this squeeze comes on, and we see that the eight is above the 21, and prices are trading above the 21 EMA, then that means that this is a setup that we want to take. Now, where do we enter? Well, I'm going to enter this trade as long as the prices are near the eight or the 21 EMA. So that means that since the squeeze is happening right here, any of these bars will do. And how much am I going to allocate to this trade? Well, I usually like to allocate around 10 to 20% of my portfolio. So if I'm trading a $10,000 account, then I'm going to look to trade around $1,500 worth of Apple stock on this trade. So I'll come in here and I'll buy Apple for, you know, probably around $262. And that will be the trade entry. Now let's take a look at the actual exits, which will be either a profit target if the trade works out in our favor, or it's going to be a stop exit if the trade happens to fizzle out. 
And for that, I'm gonna bring up another study. So let's hit the studies tab here, edit studies, and I'm gonna type in ATR, okay? So we're gonna double click ATR, and it's gonna bring up the study here in our chart, and I'm actually gonna leave it as the default parameters. So I'll hit apply here, and the ATR will show up on our charts below. So the ATR stands for average true range, and it's basically gonna tell us what the expected move should be for Apple. So at this current price of 297.43, the ATR on Apple is 4.5. That means that we should expect a move in Apple either to the upside or the downside of four and a half points. Anything more than that will be an abnormal move and something that we should take concern with. So when that relates to our stock, let's say we buy Apple at $262 on this trade entry right here. Then if Apple were to move down four and a half points, we really shouldn't be worried about that. That's calculated by the ATR and it's something that's expected. But let's say Apple were to move two times the average true range. So let's say it were to actually move nine points then that's something that we should be concerned about because that's an abnormal move. So what I'm going to do as a trader is I'm going to figure out what two ATR move is going to be. So a two ATR move to the downside is going to be a move to 253 and a two ATR move to the upside is going to be 271. Now, how is that gonna help me out? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to immediately place a alert at 263. So if Apple is ever trading, sorry, not 263, that was 253. And that tells me if Apple is ever trading below 253, then I should be worried. And if Apple were to close below that, then I should exit my trade for a loss. And on the flip side, I want to take profits when we make a two ATR to the upside. So that number I believe was 271. So I'm gonna add an alert here for 271. So now we have our profit zone up here and we have our exit zone down here. And if we look at this chart here, if we were to buy the stock in this area, we would see that sure, Apple does gap down, but it doesn't move to our stop exit. So we still hold on to this position and then Apple actually swings up and it hits our profit target. Now, this profit target doesn't have to be the end all for the trade. We can actually just take out around 50% of our position, and we can see if the other 50% will ride on further. And as we see here, if we did take 50% of our profits here, that would be some nice low hanging fruit, which, you know, if you were to consistently do this, you would make a killing. But as swing traders, we always wanna see if the stock can move higher and higher, so we can actually hold on to the other 50% here and ride it out. Now, how do you actually write out the other 50%? Well, there's many different ways you could do it. You could have stops below the previous day's close. You could be you know, looking for some kind of like measured move target. But what I like to do is I like to use a two day trailing stop. So basically I will always be moving my stop below the low of the past two days. So let's see how that would play out. So we sell our 50% here, and now my low of the past two days is down here. So I would move it right here. Then as the stock trades up, we move it again. Low of the past two days, it keeps trading up higher. Low of the past two days, we keep trailing into this. And then it finally makes another low here and we keep moving it up and up. And actually, if we take a look at this chart, we still would not have been stopped out by this point. Our 
alert would be right here and we would actually still be in the other half of our trade. And that's it guys, that's the end of part three and that's gonna wrap up our video here. So let me do a quick recap for you guys. We wanna be trading the squeeze for swing setups because we are looking for explosive moves when the stock moves from low volatility to high volatility. For the setup, the perfect chart is gonna have the eight EMA above the 21 EMA, prices above the 21 EMA, and you're gonna to have to see the squeeze indicator in effect. Now, as for setting up your chart, let's look at my studies tab here. I'll click edit studies, and we can see that I am using the ATR with the default parameters. I'm using the TTM squeeze with the default parameters, and then I'm using the moving average exponential with the eight and the 21 EMA. And then remember, as for your stops, we're looking at exiting the trade if it violates the two ATR move against us. And then we are looking to take off at least half of our position if the stock were to move two ATR in our favor. And that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you have any further questions about this setup, please feel free to contact me or comment in the messages below and I'll be sure to respond. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you at the next video.